Welcome to the She Builds Voices of Women of Color series, a new show at this year's AWS reInvent aimed to amplify underrepresented or minority women in tech. Throughout this series, you will hear from women around the world with diverse backgrounds sharing their stories, triumphs, and challenges, which we hope will inspire and empower you in your own journey. But most importantly, bring awareness of the voices that are often unheard. I am joined today by Ashmeet Kara, Principal Solutions Architect here at Amazon Web Services. Welcome, Ashmeet. Thank you, Kim. Hi, everyone. I'm Ashmeet. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect at Amazon Web Services. Been in Amazon for almost about four years and have a tech career of almost about 15 years now. Uh, been working, uh, working in Amazon across various roles in Australia and currently based out of US. Um, work alongside a lot of strategic customers along with um, some of our internal stakeholders and enjoy building um, technology with our groups internally and also supporting our customers. Customers. Uh, prior to Amazon, I have done different and variety of diverse technological roles. Um, you know, starting from being a being a Java programmer to actually coming into the integration world and working on hybrid architectures to now into artificial intelligence and machine learning. Um, I really enjoy working with different set of customers, solving uh, interesting customer problems. Plus, I also enjoy coding at home and building interesting solutions back home. Ashmi, you have done some amazing work here at AWS. I have had the privilege of working with you when you were based in Australia. And for many of those of you who do not know, I'm currently streaming live from Sydney, Australia. Um, and Ashmi has recently moved over to the US. Ashmi, would you mind sharing with our audience today a little bit about your background here at AWS, some of the experiences that you've had moving around the world with the company and building some amazing solutions. But most incredibly and more, most importantly, I'd love to hear a little bit about the work that you're doing with artificial intelligence. Of course. Um, I've been in Amazon for almost four years, and it always feels day one, right, right from the very beginning. Um, I joined uh, in Australia as a solutions architect in the territory segment and eventually moved on to, into setting up digital native business segment in Australia with some of our leadership in Australia. Um, it was very interesting experience because I got an opportunity to not only uh, work with my leaders to set up a new segment, but establish 10 of how we should work with our digital native customers and how technology can impact them having better customer experiences. Um, from then on, I dived deep into a lot of strategic customers across Australia and joined a group of, which was formed in Australia supporting APAC customers, and that was called as uh, the Technology Advisory Practice Group, which is more about looking after customers who are going really big on business transformation and helping them evolve technology and migrate important workloads um, and critical business workloads onto AWS. When I was doing all that work, one of the things which really kept me excited was how much impact machine learning and artificial intelligence is having across the businesses. When I did my engineering um, and master's back in 2010, when I passed out on a degree on machine learning, to be very honest, there were absolutely no data science jobs. Um, we were all, you know, I, I, I did my thesis and worked towards that, but couldn't find a single AI specific, interesting, uh, you know, uh, applied science jobs. It was more very theoretical at that point in time. Uh, but with time, you know, as as you can see today, uh, almost in every every um, segment, every vertical, artificial intelligence plays a key role. And I'm so happy that now I can actually contribute and come back to my roots and make an impact uh, with our customers on machine learning. Um, with Amazon, we have a very specific set of teams who are specializing in AI, and I work hand in hand with them, uh, looking at what the field customers are trying to solve and, and looking at our services and trying to bridge the gap between how we can uh, facilitate and create features which can make an impact to our customers. And that really makes me very excited. 
Every yeah. day. That's so interesting, Ashmi. And I feel like you undersold yourself because I think some of the stuff that you're working on is really interesting. Um, I'd love for you to share some examples, especially with some of our viewers who are tuning in from around the world, maybe some that are not coming from a technical background. Um, could you give us examples of some of the really cool stuff that you're working on in the AI space, maybe with a familiar brand that many might be aware of? Absolutely. So um, I have been working with some of our customers, like recently I've been working with Dropbox, uh, which is, uh, which is a, a customer who's going really big on smart workspaces. And we're working together with them using Amazon SageMaker, which is our platform service, to build a model so that we can support and facilitate um, customers who use Dropbox into more productive solutions, uh, providing capabilities like um, how, to, how to share data effectively, how to manage data effectively within Dropbox using AI ML. I think that's one of the re recent examples I've worked on. That's a really interesting reference, Ashmi, and I want to dive a little bit deeper into um, this reference. And let's go back, let's go back to the beginning, Ashmi. How did you get started in IT? Tell me a little bit about your story, your background, where you come from. I actually come from India. I was born and raised in Delhi. Um, and I, since since from the very beginning, since my school days, um, maths and science were my favorite subjects. Um, and mathematics was something I could do literally all the time because I used to love solving complex mathematical problems since I was a kid. Um, it was quite interesting that I come from a very, um, you know, conservative business family. So having that, you know, interest towards maths and science was quite different than some of how other kids in my family were focused on. They were more focused on, you know, managing family business and kind of going big on that. But I kind of took a step back and worked towards building my, you know, analytical skills. Um, and as a result of that, I earned a lot of scholarships. <clears throat> I earned a lot of scholarships in my school, um, whether it's going through global, you know, or Indian Olympiads in mathematics. That really resonated with my father because he noticed that my keenness and my interest in mathematics is really, um, you know, way too much to ignore or to not, you know, see. And he was, he was always a key mobilizer in kind of building my journey towards uh, me being an engineer. <clears throat> In, in India, especially because I come from a very conservative family, you know, um, having girls go abroad and, you know, get educated and do masters uh, in engineering was not something very, very common. I'm sure a lot of people who are listening to me might be some might be surprised and some might relate to that. But actually, you know, I was the first child in my family for the new generation. And being a girl, I think everybody was really apprehensive for sending me a first of all, for me doing engineering and then sending me abroad to do my further studies. I think what really benefited me at that point of time was my curiosity and my spirit to learn and dive deep and enjoy, um, you know, maths. And, you know, that made my father realize that this is something which uh, she's passionate about and this is what she really wants to do. Um, we, I had a lot of uh, you know, biases, barriers from a lot of family members for me not taking a career path in engineering and focus on, you know, uh, just regular, you know, degrees and work towards uh, the next steps, you know, where, you know, you, you call concepts like, you know, that girls are made to do certain things and boys are made to do certain things. Um, it's kind of, you know, what I call it now, it's a pinkification of how, you know, girls should think about. It's a stereotype for us as a woman as to this is what we are good at and this is what men are good at. But my father realized that you know, this is this is this is now this is not important. The important thing is what makes me happy, you know, what excites me. And at that point in time, you know, we were also going through um, some uh, some crisis at home, uh, financial crisis and, you know, so, something which was, which could have impacted me actually going and building a career in engineering and further into uh, my studies abroad. But one person who had who had my back was that, you know, this making money and, you know, building properties is not what is crucial for, for my dad. What is important is the education to the kids, because what that will bring is is far more critical than, you know, anything else. And I think he 
he led the way for me to actually um, uh, go ahead and build a career in technology. Now, saying that, um, I also was a very curious kid from the very beginning. I always used to follow. I was an active, active member of IEEE Society, where a lot of engineering papers were published, and I used to participate and, um, you know, I'd, and have a lot of discussions with my peers and also people who had authored the papers and have conversations with them, dive deep on topics. And basically, my curiosity was the one which led me to uh, pursue a degree in artificial intelligence. Um, I followed a, a leader who built up an AI paper on some very specific models, and I did a deep analysis and reached out to him with some questions, um, not realizing that uh, he would be so impressed with my work that he would offer me a scholarship to work under him um, in, 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 in this research subject, which led me come to New Zealand and build a career uh, and basically do my education in machine learning in a much more deeper level. Um, so it was just just my curiosity, my interest, plus uh, backing from my father, which led to me kind of break those cultural stereotypes and come abroad, educate myself, and make a difference. I think also um, your strength, your courage, your bias for action, and a lot of other amazing attributes. Ashmeet, I think you know that's a really profound story for many of our viewers to hear um, that come from cultures where um, there are still some stereotypes and bias uh, against them to excel in a career in tech or, or in a career. And it's important for them to hear that stories like yours um, are still out there and that, that anything's possible. I do want to touch a little bit about um, some points that you mentioned, and I think this is very inspiring for our viewers to hear. And um, this is more around creating opportunities for yourself. So oftentimes, women may feel um, a little bit more hesitant to reach out to someone they may not know or to expand out of their network. You mentioned that you reached out to a professor and shared your insights um, around machine learning, and that gave you an opportunity to excel in that as a, a master's degree. I want to learn a little bit more about some of your skills that you've learned over time in overcoming some of the fear, some of maybe the insecurities or doubts you had within yourself to excel in a path towards your goals. Yeah, I think that's a that's a very good question, Kim. I think um, initially, you know, I um, when I look at my journey, I was a very introvert engineer, kind of hiding behind my computer and laptop and doing lots and lots of coding. Um, very very shy in having conversations, um, in interacting. But I also at the same time, uh, whenever I'm doing a research or study or want to learn something, I am always seeking for answers, and I'm I'm. Uh, and that is the reason, you know, uh, my my virtue of kind of getting into technology was to just, you know, get my curiosity skills tested and my inquisitiveness taken care of. And I think um, I did, and I would definitely say that I was a bit concerned that how, should, uh, you know, I'm reaching out to this professor via an email, maybe I'll never hear back from him, or, you know, what, what worst can happen? I'll be ignored, but if I don't try, if I don't make an effort, if I don't uh, try to at, at least make an attempt um, to learn something which I really want to learn, then you know it's it's I'm not doing right to myself. I'm not doing right to my journey. And um, I uh, I reached out, and I was I was also struggling because I also have that you know that the thing in my in me that you know uh, you don't know that person yet you are trying to connect but ultimately my goal was to seek knowledge um to kind of build that connection to learn maybe my questions are inconsistent or maybe i have too many questions or maybe i'm not aware of something which i should be aware of anything can come out of it not realizing that actually uh, my questions came out to be really relevant, really an addition to what he was researching on and made a way for me to kind of take the next next step. So I would say that, you know, we all go through that, you know, yes and no moment. But 
I, I always believe that it's always worth trying if, if you really feel that could enhance your knowledge or give you a new avenue of learning. I think learn and be curious is also one of Amazon's leadership principles. And uh, this has been with me throughout, right from, you know, when kids are born, people, kids just ask so many questions. Just don't lose out that spirit as you grow up and, and keep on experimenting and learning new things and don't stop learning. And I think that was my biggest uh, um, learning curve didn't happen quickly, but one, you can say baby steps, trying to, you know, come across and understand stuff really makes an impact. I love that. And it reminds me a lot of, you know, learning be curious. It reverts back into when we were all children, how bold and fearless, you know, children are and how we were, I'm sure. Um, and being that bold and fearless is something that as an adult, you, you sort of kind of lose at different parts of your life through your own challenges, experiences, or life, um, anything happens in, in those chapters of your life. Can you take me back a little bit more about that decision? That's a, a huge decision that you had from moving from India to overseas. You mentioned that your family, um, you know, were probably, some of them were against that move, some were for that move in support. Tell me a little bit about, go back to the younger Ashmi and tell me some of the challenges that you felt and what you were experiencing, some of the thoughts in your mind. Because there are a lot of people watching today who will experience that or have experienced that. And some of the takeaways they might get from you will help inspire them or empower them to make that change and that move that can feel very scary at this stage. I think um, if, you, if, you, if I go back to my childhood, um, my parents especially never kind of differentiated between me and my younger brother. And that's how I was, you know, raised in my family. But I did notice, um, you know, I did notice that there is some level of difference across the society um, among how a woman is raised and what they are supposed to do versus what a, what a man should be focusing on. And it was quite, you, you could observe that, maybe you're not experiencing that personally, but it was quite, quite visible in the society. Um, and I I really couldn't understand. Um, I was, if I am good at something, you know, if I, if I can do math, mathematics really well, if I can study science really well and score, um, and you know, top the ranking uh, among the peers, and the peers includes boys and girls both, then why can't I take decisions for myself and focus on the next big step, which is pursue engineering? Um, and it's just basically comes back to, you know, the whole stereotypes which we have in the society, which, and, and you know, if you look at the stats as well, you know, I'm going back to stats while linking to my story. Um, if you look at current stats, they, uh, there's a recent research which they say that the equality aspect when you look at for men and women, it will take about 100 and 50 plus years to balance that out. Imagine, imagine the amount, even if, you know, societies are working towards um, understanding the, the, the gap, but still there is a long way to go. And we, I was experiencing that culturally in India, um, you know, going abroad, even if in engineering was still doable uh, based on current circumstances, but going abroad, there was this feeling about, you know, why are you sending your, your girl abroad all by herself? Um, how will she look after herself? This, these were some of the very strange um, things which were put onto me where, uh, you know, my parents had to stand tall, especially my dad, that, you know, if I trust my children, if they trust what they want to pursue, I think we should not stop them. And I think, um, yes, there are these noises which happen from the society, and this will continue to happen. You know, whether you are in your in India, or even if you come overseas and work in a society where you are a minority, all these noises, all these interruptions will come and kind of uh, haunt you across different parts of, of, of your your life but what really is important is how much confidence you have on your goals um, and on yourself and on your aspirations and you know even if you have like one person 
kind of vouching for you and supporting you that gives you so much um, you know so much strength as women you know we are always called that the kind of strength we have is matched to you know no no no, no man can match the level of strength a woman has um, and i really believe that you know we even if we have that one person who is kind of standing behind and giving that support i think that the courage and strength just happens you know it it's just um it it just comes across um really well and and when i when i take when i look back to myself you know long time back all i have you know learned is that courage bold and be brave is, is being brave about what you really want to pursue is very critical uh, because ultimately you are responsible for your life your career where you want to take it and i also believe that we as women you know we don't know what's coming in life you know we really don't know what the future holds being financially independent and being able to look after yourself is a very important um, aspect for you to be you know independent overall you know um, and and le lead a life which makes sense to you um, of course why Why not? You know, that's that. That's what I would always question, and getting that back and support from your parents um, was especially very critical for me. Yes. the society was against me but now today when i go back home almost all the younger kids in my family including boys and girls who are my siblings are actually kind of paving the path towards technology and following uh, the path which i started in the family so i feel really happy that overall outcome has been that i could if i couldn't change the whole society at least i could change a subset of society which is linked to my family to my roots uh, and those kids when they are pursuing the engineering degrees and share their success with me i think that that gives me much more happiness and power than what i have achieved for myself oh you've done a great job ashmeet um and i can imagine how your family and your community would be proud of you you definitely paved the way um i want to talk a little bit about you paving the way for women here at amazon web services in your current role because you've done such a great job i've seen this a lot of our colleagues and a lot of our our customers and those watching today um i'm sure they've seen it as well because you've done a lot of work through our uh, aws global summits um some of those major large scale events can you talk to me a little bit about how you have found your career path here at aws um specifically around your growth and i know that you've recently had a, a really excellent and amazing promotion i want to congratulate on that definitely well earned um a lot of women not just in amazon web services but just in general have a hard time working or planning on their promotion let's talk a little bit about that process for you what that feels like and what your goals are in the future so journey started with internal demos to actually coming to a point where uh, i was working with my team to run that track so i think the take away from this is not about what i have done but it's more about how as a woman be confident of what you are good at and not only be confident about it but have your own voice and showcase that i know blowing your own trumpet is not something I people want to do and i also am not really comfortable in doing that there is also a very thin line between you know showcasing what you are good at and demonstrating your super power then going overboard with it so having that consistency that humbleness in intact it's really important to have that voice and showcase what you can deliver and what your super power is what you should take away from that is give back if you are being mentored and supported in your career then encourage and champion other women who are actually trying to pave their way into technology who might be facing similar biases if you are good at something be brave to outshine and talk about it but in that um if you because when i take a step back and look at uh, not just amazon but globally if you look at um, women are in technology yes there are there women in color even less but then you even look at the further stats of um, you know management and leadership and cio to cxo positions if you go at that level executive positions women in color are even less so if i look at that whole graph and i pave the way towards where you start to you know the numbers as you go up the numbers just reduce you it's 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 a open it's a it's a moment where you reflect upon and think that why can't we get that chair and that that 
that presence in in that room where we have we have some key decisions being made and i think that's what keeps keeps me going um in terms of you know uh, promotions and working towards that i think um, it's like a proxy it's like an effect of your work um some um my promotion happened just because i had enough data points to confirm that you know uh, i am i'm doing what is needed to be at the principal level and similarly anybody who's listening you know data is the key pursue your goals and and power with your superpower and then identify those data points and be vocal about that to your leadership so that you get an opportunity to go to the next level and in fact i really want you know and i know a lot of other women really want to see other women in the executive positions in the senior leadership positions because that is when you would see that whole you know the difference you see in positions would be managed yeah and that's you covered so many amazing areas for our audience today to take away um a lot of that resonated with me and i agree i think that that has some powerful punch behind some of the advice and you know often women um are a little bit more hesitant to share what they're good at or vocalize their superpowers and that comes a little bit more um, natural for men and that was discussed in previous she build uh, sessions where we had male and female panel um, individuals discussing you know how to be a good male ally and also some of the challenges that women face so i love that you touched on that and i think that's important for our audience to hear is that you know it's okay to showcase what you do and, and share your voice on your superpower um, as ashmeet mentioned humbly is you know really great way to move forward but there is a really wonderful opportunity for you to be seen and to be heard if you have the courage and you have the skills to do so so definitely encourage you all to to showcase those superpowers and separate yourself and distinguish yourself from your colleagues. Now, Ashmi, you also talked a little bit about statistics and we love data at AWS as you would know. Um and you touched around the stats um with women in technology and how that stats sort of diminishes as you go up the the ladder, which is was very true. Now, you make up the 5% of Asian women within tech and now there's 25% of women are in the tech industry. 5%. So that is quite small. That's a minority and I think that you've been doing a wonderful job in paving the way for more women in the Asia region which include India. Um now could you maybe share a couple of um biases that you have been told and that how you've debunked those in your past? Um it's quite um yeah you make me think about it um interestingly but um a lot of times um you know not more than a bias we experienced uh, it's more about um things like and it's not it's agnostic to you know wherever you work but if you are a female first of all you always would realize that you are a minority in a, even in a meeting room um and that to um so some of the biases i face it's quite interesting that um for me to kind of come into a room i need to do a lot of lot more justification as to uh, my to kind of build my credibility um because uh, i can call myself as a principal essay or a senior essay or a solutions architect but ultimately you know the amount of effort which a female needs to kind of show their credibility is far more um than a male would need and everybody you know every solutions architect every technologist every developer whoever is listening to this talk might would definitely relate to that that we have to prove ourselves 10 or 20 times more worthy uh than our our fellow uh male um a coworker apart from that there are some very interesting uh, microaggressions which female sometimes face and i would not lie i have faced that in my career throughout it's been a 15 year plus career uh, things like you know somebody speaks on top of you or somebody would not let you talk uh, if you have a point um so and and these are some of the biases we face um even you know i have a um i have a family member who is a, who's a female she's starting a she's going to start a new startup now and even she was sharing her journey with me and told me that getting a getting a venture capitalist agree on my on her idea was far more difficult than how she experiences that with some of her male friends who's ideas are you know significantly not as interesting as hers but getting that trust from the society that this that females can do something or female can make an impact it's it's far more you know obvious and probably 
confident. We have to do far more work to prove ourselves worthy as to why we are in this meeting doing this particular uh, task than any of our male counterparts would. And you know, um, I I understand that. I realize that. But that the interesting part is that that whole thing gives me a kick in a, in an interesting way. That that's what makes me excited about my job my work as a technologist, because I want to break that stereotype along with my own other, you know, uh, female solutions architects that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's the skill, it's the technology that is more important. Even, you know, engineering um, have, without creativity goes nowhere. So uh, being able to understand and going through these unconscious biases, yet winning over it gives me that extra, you know, um, excitement that, yes, you can make an impact. But you can see that. I also can tell you one personal story. Um, I, uh, I, as a, I come from India. So initially, when I came abroad, it was really hard for me to have, um, I used to have a very, um, very, th very different segment between my professional life and my personal life. You know, that's, that's how we were in India. So when I came here, I noticed, like when I went to New Zealand and then Australia, now America, people are more open to communication and conversations about their kids, their their pets, and their family. Um, I come from a culture where we keep it quite, um, you know, um, differentiated, different, like family is family and work is work. It was quite different. Although, you know, getting, ha although going through the whole pandemic, uh, you know, with, with, with the world, things have changed. But yes, there was that thing inside me that I always kept it separate. And I always used to get this feedback that when you meet customers, you don't, you don't have that personal conversations about, um, so how, how was your weekend and how are your kids doing and all that, because it did not come naturally to me. I was not comfortable in having, I was like, I'm a technologist, I'm here right. to solve a customer thing and it didn't come naturally, but I had to build that whole cultural thing inside me that we need to open up a bit more from a human side yeah. to kind of know the person a bit more and then work towards the work, which was not very obvious in the first place. And I learned that with time. And that's the, you know, also a testament of how adaptable you are um, as well. And I think that's really helpful for those watching today, um, you know, to, to kind of work through those challenges and be more resilient. And we are humans and that humanistic approach of getting to know one another, building our networks, communicating, um, you know, there are some unconscious biases that individuals could have and they could also be um, not just male allies but they can be women as well um, so it's important for us to although we face those unconscious biases and daily and microaggressions as you mentioned how do you as an individual overcome that and use that as fuel and say that's okay I'm still who I am and I'm gonna continue on my path that's just a chapter in my book that's just a bump in the road but I've got this and I love that resiliency and, and that um, empowerment that you have Ashmi. I know you just moved to the U.S., uh, and I, uh, many yeah. of, of people watching today will recognize you from being in Australia and New Zealand for many years. Tell us what has been the most exciting and cool experience you have um, now experienced in your new country in the U.S. What's your favorite food, or what do you love about your, your new state? I, um, it's quite interesting that I have lived in many countries uh, with my different jobs. I've lived in um, New Zealand, Australia, and now US, and also, you know, being raised in India. It's every country brings up together a lot of interesting experiences. It's been only about three months for me being in US right now. I really, um, I really, um, couldn't explore a lot with my uh, in in the in the work because we are all working from home at the moment. But I'm really enjoying working with my team over here as much as I did. I I definitely miss my Australian team a lot because we were more connected because we were all together in a lot of different things. And pandemic has changed a lot of ways of how you kind of meet and interact with people. So I'm still building that bond um, in US with my team. Um, what I love about US um, more mostly is, um, you know, uh, that there are so many opportunities. Like, uh, I come, my husband is from a hardware industry, and one of the biggest reasons we moved to the U.S. was more opportunities for him, uh, especially in the, the industry he's in. And I think um, 
uh, looking him happy in his favorite zone and makes me happy and i think that was that that's what really excites me being in us that finally we are feeling settled um we're feeling that we we are now at home and we don't want to make any more moves but i'm still exploring i i honestly miss a lot of australian food i haven't explored a lot of us food ex except for a lot of tex mex or the mexican places which my husband loves but apart from that i'm still exploring so i think i would be in a better position to answer this in a few months when i've settled in and explored more but i'm really looking forward to some of my hiking trips in utah and that's going to be the next big thing we're going to explore in us well let me know if you want any advice or recommendations um, you can't go wrong with shopping at whole foods uh, so i'll just let you know <laughs> about that but i'm more than happy to give you some list of, of food um, so everyone thank you so much for joining us today and thank you ashmeet for uh, just sharing your story it was just so inspiring, so heartfelt to hear um, all of the challenges, but also amazingly all the triumphs that you've done. I can't wait to see what more you do. And I know that's going to be um, some amazing work here at AWS. So we're very lucky to have you. Um, for those of you watching and tuning in to AWS She Builds Voices of Women of Color, stay tuned this week. We have a lot of amazing segments covering women from across the world. And we hope that you feel empowered and inspired through all of the voices of these incredible women. Thank you again, Ashmeet. Thank you. Thank you.